GCSE English Literature, Journey's End, The Plot, Act 1. Hello everyone, it's GCSE Revision here, and today I'm bringing you the second part of the Journey's End series, where we're looking at the plot of Act 1. This will cover the whole of Act 1, and today we're going to be looking at the characters, the occurrences of the play, and um, some hidden parts in there which relate each of the characters to each other, which you can write about in your exam. Learning objectives. Today's learning objectives are to have an understanding of the environment the book takes place in and to know of some of the characteristics of the characters mentioned in the play. The environment. The play is set in British trenches but for St. Quentin. Captain. Now, this is opposite to the British trench, there is a German trench who pose a threat as they are going to attack in a matter of days from the start of the play. This causes tension in the book, which helps the prevalent theme of fear um, be very prominent throughout the whole book. Hardy and Osborne The play begins with a conversation between the two characters, where Osborne comes in to relieve Captain Hardy of his duty. Hardy begins to joke about Stanhope's behaviour when he is drunk and he's turned to alcohol to cope with the stress the war gives him. This is because Stanhope has been serving as in the war for three years and the accumulated stress of not being given a break and carry on constant work has made him have to turn to alcoholism to have to cope with it. This has led him in the past as Hardy mentioned some past um, incidents which the other men aren't so proud to mention where Stanhope has sort of wrecked dinners by throwing glasses on the floor as he's drunk or doing things like that which some of the men such as Hardy don't appreciate but then again Stanhope is their leader so they do respect him. Osborne who is about Stanhope's well, twice his age seeing as Stanhope's 21 we presume Osborne's around 42 he defends him and he says the best company manager we've got. Osborne is looked up to by all the men, and they all refer to him as Uncle. Seeing he's one of the eldest, it, that might be because he's seen as a father figure towards them, so they look up to him for advice, and especially Stanhope, who shares a really good relationship with Osborne. They talk to each other man to man, and they can tell each other anything that they are worried about. And that's why Stanhope especially refers to him as Uncle, and Osborne is able to give him the best advice he needs. The introduction of Raleigh. Raleigh new, um, is a young new officer who draws a, who joins a company. He is described as naive in the book, or as that is what we can gather, as he isn't he doesn't have that much of a working knowledge of the war itself. He knew Stanhope from school and looks up to him as a role model. Stanhope even describes him as a hero worshipper. He even requests to be sent to Stanhope's. Uh, company when he was sent to the war as a new recruit. He calls Stanhope Dennis as they've been childhood friends. Stan, um, yeah, Stanhope took part in rugby and cricket in the school and was the rugby skipper or captain and from that Raleigh really looked up to him as he was a big um, hit in school and now playing, um, no not playing, what am I saying, now working in the war Raleigh really looks up to him and wants to be like him. That's perhaps why he joined the war in the first place, and more specifically, his company. He doesn't know about Dennis's, or as he calls him Dennis, Stanhope's alcoholism, and worries that Stanhope, and Stanhope worries, as he has a relationship with Raleigh's sister, who's called Madge, and he doesn't want Raleigh to realise and then tell his um, sister what Stanhope has become. So this worries Stanhope an awful lot, and he um, does, he is concerned that Raleigh will write home and inform Stan of them of Stanhope's drinking. So for this reason, Stanhope didn't really want um, Raleigh in his company. He then tells Osborne that he should censor Raleigh's letters so that it doesn't happen, but Osborne does not improve. Stanhope's sense of duty. Stanhope has a very keen sense of duty and feels that he must continue to serve rather than take a leave to which he's entitled. He's been working for three years now 
and has, hasn't wanted to take a break. He criticises the other soldier, 2nd Lieutenant Hibbert, who thinks he is faking neuralgia in the eye so that he could be sent home instead of continue fighting. At the end, Stanhope ends up drunk and is having to be tucked into bed by Osborne, to which Stanhope shows some of his feelings for him, which we can't take seriously seeing as he is drunk, but he does, you can even tell while he is drunk, he looks up an awful lot to Osborne, and Osborne's companionship and looking after him shows what a good relationship the two of them share. Right, that's the end of the plot summary in Act 1. That's a rundown of everything that's happened. I will be doing a key quote video which will look at the key quotes in the plot and what some of those quotes mean later on so you can find that within this playlist. And yeah, next up will be Act 2, Scene 1 and the plot that we'll do with that. So thank you for watching today. Like and subscribe for more of these videos and yeah, more of these Jenny Yen videos and check out the channel to see if some of your subjects which you do, whether it be maths, any of the sciences, English, business, geography, history are on the channel. So then that way you can revise them and yeah, good luck with your exams. So thank you for watching and goodbye.